Hmm. Let's see. Lots of light coming in. Close the, the window a little bit. Okay. Good afternoon. I am in my living room. It's really bright here in North Carolina. Look at that. Let's see if I can move around one second. Okay. I think that's the best it's going to get. It looks like I have a halo over my head. So hopefully it's not distracting. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How many of you guys did the webinar yesterday? The passion to income webinar. Give me a thumbs up. If you are on the passion, uh, to income webinar. Yay. Good, good. I hope it was helpful. Good, good, good. Good. We'll probably post the recording over the weekend. You'll be able to find it on our site. Um, we had so many people register, so it's just best. We're going to make it free for everybody to be able to access that recording on the Ask Dr. Faith site, and you'll be able to um, just go and listen to it and get the information um, for, for, for that class. So, all right, so we are talking today, you know, this whole month, how do I see the replay? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're going to post the recording on the Ask Dr. Faith site by Monday. So that way you can just click a button on our website and you can listen to it. It's going to be probably under products, but it's going to be free. It's going to be free for everywhere. Um, AskDrFaith.com. Someone is asking, where do, where do I go? Okay. Oh, good, good. Someone said their husband and them haven't stopped talking about it. Great. I really hope it was really, really helpful. So today I'm just going to continue on what we've been talking about in terms of giftings, in terms of um, just understanding who you are in God. We started out March by learning how to communicate uh, or learning how God communicates with you. So we still have that workshop coming up March 30th, learning how to hear the voice of God, understanding your spiritual gifts. Um, thanks. Someone said my hair is cute. Thank you. So what I want to do right now is actually give you guys, because people ask this question all the time, what is the difference between gifts and talents? So I'm going to start there and then I'm going to go into how do you handle being multifaceted? So if you know someone who's multifaceted, multi-gifted, these are people who usually start every single business but never finish them. They're usually jumping from... Um, from career to career, but never really sticking to one. They usually have a lot of good ideas, but can never see them fulfilled. These people are usually multifaceted and they just haven't been discipled in learning how to develop things one core at a time. So I need you guys to share this with your friends um, so that it can be a blessing with them. So however you share on your phone, um, do that as well. So let me talk about the difference between talents and gifts. It can get a little bit confusing. Our focus has been on spiritual gifts. So you can go back to, thank you for sharing guys. You can go back to catch.me and look up Ask Dr. Faith and you can review the Periscope from last week where we talked about the different groupings of spiritual gifts. We talked about gifts that God has given you to help you build the kingdom of God. So administration, giving, serving, uh, help service, mercy showing. Those are also that you can build the kingdom of God. Then we talked about gifts that every believer has, the supernatural or manifestation gifts, um, such as prophecy, healing, uh, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, um, speaking in tongues. Um, and that one, oh gosh, maybe one day I'll do a whole periscope on it, but I'm going to teach on tongues in detail on the March 30th class um, for those of you guys have, who've gotten it. But those are, um, those are supernatural gifts that all of us have at least one or two of them. And then we started going into the ministry gifts, which is about the fivefold, which I haven't done a whole periscope on that yet. I will um, very soon where I'm going to talk about uh, teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors. And we'll talk about how do you know where you fall if you're called into ministry. And if you're called into ministry, you're going to fall in one of those areas. The only way you may not is if your church doesn't believe in the fivefold. So you have some churches who don't think women should preach. So everybody's just a, a missionary, right? Or you have, um, uh, you have, you know, some churches that you, um, they don't believe in, you know, the fivefold. So everybody's a bishop or something like that. So it's really important that, um, you know, you know, if you feel like you're called to ministry, that you know exactly where you fall in the fivefold. All right. Okay. 
So let's talk about the difference between talents and gifts, um, especially spiritual gifts. When we're talking about talents, we're talking about naturally uh, things that come from your family, things that come down genetically. So yesterday when we did the passion to income class, people were getting confused because I asked them, you know, what do you feel like your oil is? You know, what do you have in you that can help you create income so that you can not only be a blessing to the kingdom of God, but you can also live. So things like singing, that's a talent. It's something that is genetically in you and maybe, okay, some, uh, sometimes pastor is ordained because of the gift only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll talk a little bit more about that at some point. Um, talents are naturally, uh, ingrained in you. And a lot of them are genetically predisposed. And that's the word we use, predisposition or predisposed. And so you may come from a family that sings. You may come from a family of really good football players. You may come from a family of people that are really talented, even at things like leadership or, you know, people that are really uh, talented at administration. Those gifts are, I'm sorry, those talents are there even when you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, even when you're not a believer. But the difference between talents and super spiritual gifts is that the gifts that you have in the spiritual gifts arena are only empowered by the Holy Spirit. So you could have a gift, you know, to sing, but when you get filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to walk in your, in your assignment, you can become a worshiper or you can be, you're, there's going to be an anointing on your singing that it actually changes um, things. Someone says, I have no talent. I'm I'm pretty sure if I did a 30 minute assessment with you, we could find your talents. Everybody um, has a talent. Um, so the, the, the difference is the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. OK, the Holy Spirit gives them to us. Talents are kind of naturally born. OK, so when you are multifaceted or multidimensional, usually you are having trying to figure out how do I balance the things that I'm given spiritually, like prophecy or teaching? And then how do I balance being a businessman or being a businesswoman or I have all these ideas? How do I go about uh, fulfilling all of them. And so it's really, really important that you begin to learn uh, which, you know, what you're w looking at. Don't just say, okay, I have all these ideas. Sort it out. Is this a spiritual thing that the Lord is wanting me to do in the context of, um, in the context of, uh, preaching or in the context of ministry, or is this something that God wants me to do inside the, the, uh, outside the church walls? So you need to look at what you feel like you're being called to do and you need to discern, is this operating out of my gifting? Is this operating out of my, um, is this operating out of my talents that I have? Okay. So that's one of the first things. Then these are the three main things that I'm going to give you guys to help you discern. Because when you're multifaceted, you're probably also a visionary. You're someone who gets ideas. Uh, you have visions about where you're going and what you want to do. And so it's really important that guys feel free to block anybody that's saying nonsense or foolishness. Um, I don't have time to be doing all that, but, uh, if you see anybody, you know, block party here over here. So if you have a lot of ideas, you have a lot of things that you want to do, you need to figure out, okay, which one do I do first? So let me give you guys the tips on how to do that. Okay. The first thing that you want to look at is, do I have the resources? No, no, I'm going to do that one third. Do I have the expertise? OK, there's certain things that God is calling you to do. And until you have enough expertise in it, you're not going to be able to do it. So you could want to be a psychologist all day long at open clinics. But until you go and get the expertise or the education for it, you're not going to be able to do that. So the first one is you're going to ask yourself, is this a business or is this a career or is this something that requires expertise? If you want to be a life coach, right, you, you don't necessarily have to have expertise like you have to go through all these life coach programs, but have I studied what coaching means, how it works, how it's broken down? Do I have a clear understanding of what it means to be a coach instead of just saying, I want to be a coach or even a motivational speaker, right? So things even outside of school, some things that you want to do require extra education. So look at it. Do I have the expertise? If it's not education, do I have, yeah, counseling, even if you want to do inner healing and counseling, you don't have to go and get a master's. But study the different models of inner healing. Study the different way, you know, basic skills of counseling. You have to get an expertise in whatever area that you're, you're going to do, whether it requires school or not. All right. The next thing that you want to ask yourself is, do I have the experience? Um, 
if there's so many, so many things that I do not have uh, experience for yet. So how I, I cannot do it. Someone's asking, do you teach how to be a life coach? I do. I coach life coaches. I coach uh, people that want to start their own programs and all that stuff. And people have been asking me to launch a whole program on coaching on how to develop a coaching and mentoring program forever. Um, so we will do it at some point. We're working on that. But I do it on an individual basis right now. Or I'll come and train groups of people. So you want to look at the experience. So you can have the expertise like, oh, I can have our have this degree, um, but you may not have been practicing for a long time, or you may have gotten all your trainings, but you've only had one client. So how are you going to be able to really, really be able to market yourself if you've only had one person? Another thing is even preaching. Yesterday I talked about, you know, pricing, you know, learning how to price yourself. And for all those who missed that webinar, um, so beginners have no chance. No, that's not true at all. Uh, beginners do have a chance, but this is when you have multiple things on the table. This is how you weed out what to do first, okay? So when you um, are looking at experience, you want to look at how long have I been doing this. If I have no experience in this, and it doesn't have to be a degree, but if I have no experience in this, I can't start a business on it. I can't start charging on it or I can't start really trying to get um, all the, um, you know, the clientele and, and whoever that I need. So you want to look at your experience. Okay. Hey, Dr. Jill. Um, and then the last thing, and I'll kind of put everything together for you guys, is you want to look at your resources. I always tell people what is in your hands. God has put something in each one of our hands and you want to look at what you have. And when I talk about resources, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about time as well. Right? So let me give you guys an example. Uh, we want to open a school. Is there a recording? for the webinar from yesterday. You can uh, listen to it on my site on Monday. It's going to be up. We're going to give it away for free um, and you can listen to it on my site. Um, so, oh, hey, Marquita, someone's saying, hey, Miles, trying to figure out who that is. Okay, so let me go back. Resources is not just about money. Resources have to do with time and money. So for example, if I want to really, let me see, I'm trying to think right now, what do I want to do? Okay. We really want to expand our mentorship program right now. I do not have the time to develop the curriculums, right? To be able to launch it in two months. So what I have to do is say, this is a God vision. This is a God goal, but looking at my resources, I don't have the time. So this means I'm going to do this later. If there's anything that the Lord has put in your heart, and he has given you a heart for it. it. It doesn't mean if you look at your resources, expertise, and experience, if you don't have them right now, that it's not a God vision. It just means that it's time sensitive, meaning that you can wait or you have to wait until the right time. So if you look at your hands and you say, I want to start a business making jewelry, right? And you say, you know what? I'm really gifted. I have the expertise in this. I've had a lot of experience practicing in my home, right? Or if you braid hair, I've, I've had a lot of experience doing it. Uh, but I really don't have the money for cards. I don't really have the money for, you know, a big website. Well, what do you do? Use free stuff. Yesterday on the free webinar, I talked a lot about free. Well, I talked about some free resources. Just create a Facebook page. Begin to advertise what you do. Take pictures with your phone to start with. Show the world what what you do. There's free website templates. Upload them. And when your business begins to make the money, then you can expand out and do all the other things that you want to do. So the third thing you want to look at is, do I have the resources? And so if... Um, if I look, like, for example, we are going to build schools in Africa and we were given all this land with all the, you know, 500 orphans to take care of. And I was like, let's go. We're going to do it right now. This is for now. The Lord had given it to me in a dream. He gave me the uh, name. He gave me everything in a dream, how everything looks. Right. Um, but one. We didn't have the resources. It's going to take $50,000 to begin that project. So does that mean this is not something God has given me? This is something that I need to throw away? No, it just means that it's not time for it right now.
Okay. Another thing for me, I'm a worship leader. I sing. People have been saying you need to do a CD forever, forever, forever. I could do it now, but do I have the resources to do it well? No. So that means it's going to be for later on down the road. So you need to look at your resources. And just because God has given you the vision for it, or he has said it, and a lot of you guys are very prophetic. And what happens with prophetic people is when you get a vision or an impression about something, you feel like it's for right now. One of the most important things that every believer needs to learn how to do when it comes to dreams and visions is how to let things simmer. I have a lot of things on, on my oven and some are simmering in the back because it's just not time yet. And a lot of you guys do not accomplish much because you're trying to do everything at the right, at the same time. And you don't either have the expertise or you don't have the experience or you don't have the resources, which could be time or money. So one of the things that you have to do, and it's a sign of maturity in the kingdom for prophetic people, which we're all prophetic. God speaks to all of us is that we're able to get information uh, for uh, of things. Oh, someone's asking about one non uh, non-believers. You can stay on this periscope, but my assignment is to people in the kingdom of God. So, um, but all these principles work whether you're a believer or a non-believer. Uh, I do do one-on-one coaching. You email info at askdrfaith.com, and you uh, we can set you up for coaching to help you get your life organized. I love helping multifaceted people because I'm multi-gifted. And one of the things that I had to learn was learning, I mean, all those things that I've shared with you guys, but also seasons and times. There are seasons and times for everything. And if you plant certain, uh, fruit that's supposed to be planted in the spring. If you plant it in the fall, it's not going to bear any fruit when it's supposed to come up. And so there are certain things that are not going to bear any fruit in your life because they haven't, um, because they haven't bore any fruit. Someone said they emailed for coaching a week ago and they haven't gotten a response. We are swamped, like literally swamped. My admin is working her little fingers off. Uh, if you emailed last week, you're going to get an email this week. Getting a, um, They're going to ask you to set up a 15-minute consult. We do that once a week. So we're not going to respond right away. It's usually forwarded to admin. Sorry, I wanted to answer that. Um, it's usually forwarded to our admin and then my admin is going to invite you for a consult consultation time and you agree and then we go forward. Okay. Um, we, I thank God. We thank God for growth. We thank God for all those things. All right. So resources uh, and seasons and timings. If you plant something in the wrong season, you're not going to bear fruit in that season. It's the same thing about prophetic words. God could give me a word right now. If I release that word right now, and it's something that God was telling me to wait on and let it simmer, it's not going to bear fruit. It's not going to uh, manifest. And then I'm going to get frustrated and I'm going to say, oh God, I don't hear from the Lord. He told me to do this and then I did it, but it's all about timing. So you don't have to hurry when God has given you something. If you look and say, yes, I have the experience expertise and I have the resources. Um, you know, I'll do it right now. But if you look at those three things and one of them is missing, it just means you need to wait. All right. Um, I'll take a couple of questions. I know you guys have questions. People have been throwing them as we go. So the other thing, though, that I see is that you could be so bombarded with things that you, someone was saying, wait for Cairo's time. Yeah, but also I see a lot of people who just wait and they never do anything. They they have so much on their list and they feel so overwhelmed with everything that they, they want to do that they don't do anything at all. Start small. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. Use the little resources that you have and grow from there. You know, if you've been called to be a millionaire um, and all you have right now is just a simple little uh, house where you're meeting with people or you're, you know, you just have an ebook and you've been called to be a new My phone, um, somebody was calling. So it is our, it's our job to steward the anointing on our life. Steward means taking care of it, learning it, sharpening it, growing in it. It's the same thing with the talents that God has given you. And one of those ways is not learning fear or distractions come and taking that. Okay. 
All right. You can set up an appointment by me emailing info at askdrfaith.com. We're probably going to add an appointment button soon. And this is another freebie for you guys. Give yourselves permissions to evolve. If you already have a business, you need to be flexible and learn how to grow with the times. The reason uh, places like Blockbuster and even Barnes and Nobles did not um, make it or they're not making it is because they have not learned how to evolve. They're not catching up with what the industry is doing. So it's really, really, fear is the real enemy. Okay, someone's saying that. It's really, really important that whatever business you've developed, even ministry, if you have a ministry and you don't have a YouTube page, like get with the times, okay? Like there's ways that God is calling us to expand the kingdom that are beyond just Sunday morning. And so you have to allow God to grow you and evolve you. Don't make excuses um, and don't let anybody tell you you can't change. Some people get trapped. Oh, I already did that business. I don't want to do it again because I failed. What are people going to say? Do not worry about that. If the Lord is telling you to go back and try again, give yourself permission to try again. Give yourself permission to change. Give yourself permission to mature and become a different person. Okay. All right. I'm really gone for real this time. Bless you guys. (laughs) Thanks for the hearts. All right. I will talk to you on Monday. Bye.